I'm thrilled to announce major improvements to the En-ROADS and C-ROADS simulators. This is a summary video. If you want to go deeper on each of the topics that I talk about, go read the other video, go watch the other videos, or read the other articles that we've posted. All right, when you go to En-ROADS, you're going to notice the biggest change, the 2100 temperature. It's not 3.6 degrees C, it's 3.3, mostly due to our inclusion of the economic damage function in the baseline. That is, as temperature goes up, GDP per capita growth goes down slightly because of the effects of climate change. Lower economic growth means slower energy demand, therefore less coal, oil, and gas being burned, emissions go down, and temperature is lower. The second impact is just updates to what's happening in the world. And we have now more wind than last version, more solar, more electrification of transport because of electric vehicles around the world. And as a result, less coal in the baseline future, less oil in the future as well. These are due to some changes in the model, but also due to the inclusion of a $5 per ton CO2 carbon price here in the baseline as a status quo uh, setting for carbon price. So those are some of the changes in the baseline. Go watch the video, read the article to go much deeper. But we also responded to what you've been asking about. And you said, we want food and agriculture. So let's go check out some of the big changes that we made in food and agriculture. All right, I'm gonna open up a new area for carbon dioxide emissions now with categories you can see over here and CO2 net emissions from land use higher than before. Over on the right, I'm going to select in land, forestry and food area, deforestation. The land, the food and ag features are under the three dots for deforestation because that's the biggest impact that they have is reducing deforestation. We scroll down, detailed settings, food from animals and food waste. So now we have those two measures. If we have less food waste, Crop production needed goes down, less deforestation, less conversion of forest land into farmland. Lulu CF emissions or net land use emissions goes down from what it was otherwise. And we can test some of the impacts of less food waste. Alternatively, we can now look at diets, food from animals. I'll undo that change and we can look at Food, less food from animals, less deforestation, less land use emissions, but also we can go and look and see what happens to methane, less methane, nitrous oxide, less fertilizer being used, therefore less N2O emissions. Some of the impacts of food shown here. To add these food features, we, over the last four years, added land to N roads and to C roads. So now we can track farmland, forest land, other land, and on the forest land, the aging of trees through different stages and connected all of that to the carbon cycle. This brings forward two really cool additions and two benefits, frankly, of conserving forests. The first one is that now when we have less deforestation, we can see removals going up. Watch this, CO2 removals, CO2 removals from land. I'm going to undo these changes and really just focus directly on reduction in deforestation through land protection. What if we have significant reductions to deforestation? Well, it doesn't just lead to less burning of trees and rotting and releasing of soil from soils. It also boosts soil sequestration, excuse me, forest sequestration and land sequestration. CO2 removals from land goes up. This is a major improvement to the model. Now quantifying that impact. The second is that we can now look at the effects of reducing forest 
degradation. That is not changing the quantity of forest land, but the quality of it. Scroll down here to reduction in mature forest degradation, and we can see as well, emissions goes down and net removals from land going up as we have more older trees pulling more carbon out of the atmosphere. All the improvements to land and forests allow us to do a much better job of quantifying the impact of bioenergy. I'll undo these changes and come back to the main screen where we can now see that if we were to encourage more bioenergy in the future, change it there, we now see the boost to overall emissions from both burning trees, the rotting of the of parts of the trees, the soil release, but also we can now see how sequestration goes down. CO2 land removals in the top right falls a little bit. We quantify the impacts of bioenergy much better in this new version. If you want to learn more, go read the article about it and watch the other deeper dive video. We also significantly improved our modeling of electrification, both in transportation, buildings and industry, and also exposed many more features. Let's go check some of them out. I'm going to reset the graphs here, and then go and look at some new graphs that we have, electric share of transport sales and total transport. We'll focus on transportation. And in the bottom right, you can see electric share of transport sales. Previously, you could just mandate success of electrification and transport. You move the slider and you got a lot. Now we're going to explore in En-ROADS the different ways that you can get success with electrification. The two major ways that you can now approach it are, one is to encourage electrification. I'll click detailed settings. You can subsidize electric transport, hit it there, and you can see what it does to boost in the bottom right, the sales, in the top right, top left, the total transport. You can also take a second approach, not focusing on subsidizing electric transport, but building charging infrastructure to meet future demand. That is the second way. One can also take a different approach, which is to reduce the competition for electrified transport. That is, scroll down here, you can set a limit to fuel powered transport sales, similar to internal combustion engine bans. What if you don't allow the competition, then this will be something that will boost fuel powered transport, that will limit fuel powered transport sales and boost electrification. Major improvements here and also to the assumptions behind it. Go watch the other video or read the article. Some other really cool improvements in the simulator. One of them is impacts are what this is all about. So impacts is now at the top of the list of graphs. And also you may remember the button you could hit to ban future investment in coal infrastructure oil, gas, bioenergy. Well, now that's not an on off button, but it is this slider. You can just say, I'm gonna reduce coal infrastructure halfway, three quarters of the way, as much as you want. This is now a slider. We also rebuilt the reference guide. I'm gonna scroll over here to another area and check out the En-ROADS reference guide. It is now online searchable. You can look at every equation, see diagrams, what the parameters are. It is amazing to see what is accessible here regarding the transparency that we now offer, where you can look at the stocks and the constants and the data and the input variable and everything that you might want to know, as opposed to that 400 page document that was a PDF that was a real difficult thing to work with previously. The messaging in En-ROADS hasn't changed significantly. Still, principles remain and insights remain that there's no single fix to this challenge. Still, as you play with the model, it takes many seeds to plant the garden. It is still possible 
to get well below two degrees and down to 1.5. And it is still true that the top priorities, the most powerful things we can do to limit future warming are things that keep us from burning coal, oil, and gas in the next 10 or 15 years, cutting methane and reducing deforestation. And there are still a long list of things that we may wanna do, but are lower priority. Waiting for fusion, planting a trillion trees, gas and coal, CCS, some of these other measures that are out there. There are some nuances, however, that you may want to explore in the model. We'll be doing future videos on some of the nuances, particularly about the power of, of protecting forests and the fact that electrification of transport will require more policy intervention, probably not driven as much by just market forces. We've done extensive testing and comparisons of this new baseline and all of the new structure of En-ROADS. I'd like to just give you a teaser of a few results from some of the testing that we did. This is an image from 2000 to 2100, a graph of greenhouse gas net emissions for three integrated assessment models, their versions of current policies. You can see in red, uh, the current policy scenario of Remind and Remind Magpie out of Germany, Potsdam Peak, GCAM in green from the United States, Message Globium from IASA is in brown. These are all convened by the NGFS, the, NAP, the Network for Greening the Financial System. And we use this as the main comparison scenarios that we could uh, compare against to see, are we consistent with their results for the baseline, but also for some of the scenarios where temperature is uh, much lower and emissions go down a good bit. So here are their scenarios and we compare ours against them. And you can see we're slightly higher for reasons that you can explore more about in the other article and video on the baseline and the testing and comparisons. Some other results that are out there and some of the other tests that you can look at, primary energy from solar. The blue line is En-ROADS. Those three integrated assessment models are these other lines. And then there's the orange line for the International Energy Agency, World Energy Outlooks, their stated policy scenario. We make sure that we're in the span of the others, or we have a really good reason that we're not. When we test coal, we also look at the comparison against the International Energy Agency stated policy. Theirs is falling more. Our coal is more in the middle of the other integrated assessment models. We also compare against the IPCC's recent SPM.5 diagram that was in their synthesis report in the report we call AR6 in 2023. It lays out a whole range of futures, the most important one being their implemented policy and the overall span of where they think emissions would go if implemented policies are enacted around the world. And in the other article and video, you can see more results about where we sit kind of in the upper end of emissions within the span of what the uh, other scientists think are uh, what emissions will do with implemented policies. Overall, you can see massive improvements to C roads and to N roads. We hope that this is gonna help you engage other people to drive aggressive climate policy that's gonna lead to greenhouse gas emissions falling rapidly with equitable policies. Hope this was helpful. Go get them.